The Mandalorians are an iconic part of Star Wars, known for their love of high-powered blasters, jetpacks, and their infamous Beskar armor. Weapons were part of their religion, and Mandalorians made use of all manner of deadly instruments, from blasters to flamethrowers and poison darts to rocket launchers. But what if we were to tell you that the Mandalorians' greatest weapons have never appeared in mainstream Star Wars media? What if we were to tell you that at the height of their power, the Mandalorians relied not on their blasters, not on their jetpacks, but on fearsome war droids? In this video, we'll be talking about those very weapons, the Basilisk War Droids. Attention, Sergeant on deck! The story of the Basilisk War Droids began on the core world Basilisk, the home of a reptilian species called the Basiliscans. The Basiliscans were a highly advanced and technologically focused people, and they built the Basilisk war droids in their image. The droids were designed to serve as beasts of burden, both domestically and in warfare. They became an important part of Basiliscan society, which was one of the oldest and wealthiest in the galaxy. All of that changed, however, when the Mandalorians attacked. 4,017 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Mandalorian Crusaders, under the leadership of Mandalore the Indomitable, descended on Basilisk, bringing ruin to the Basiliscans. Despite their advanced technology, the Basiliscans were handily defeated. Their homeworld was rendered barren and lifeless, and the Basiliscans themselves were all but exterminated. Only a few survived as prisoners of the Mandalorians, and over the generations, their descendants would devolve, becoming animalistic Lagatoz war dragons. But the Mandalorians didn't take only the Basiliscans as slaves, they took their droids as well. As a general rule, the Mandalorians didn't care much for droids, preferring to do the hard work themselves. But the Crusaders quickly became attached to the Basilisk war droids, respecting them for their sheer power and utility. Over the course of the next decade, the droids became deeply ingrained in Mandalorian culture. The greatest Mandalorian warriors would bond with war droids and develop close relationships, treating the droids as pets or even friends. The war droids became parts of the Mandalorian clans, so much so that they were given warriors funerals when they fell in battle. But what were these war droids like? Well, they're a bit hard to describe. Basilisk war droids were six-legged armored behemoths, ranging in size from slightly larger than a bantha to larger than some small starfighters. They were semi-sentient, about as intelligent as most beasts of burden, and developed strong emotional bonds with their riders. They could operate on their own, but rarely did, as they and their riders became almost like singular entities. Basilisk war droids could operate in space and in atmosphere just as well as they could on the ground, as they had powerful sets of high boost engines designed for atmospheric combat. They were heavily armored and often featured Beskar plating, which their Mandalorian riders lovingly customized and decorated with ceremonial weapons. Basilisks were also armed to an absurd degree. These walking apocalypses brandished claws that could shred durasteel, rapid-firing laser cannons, launches for concussion missiles and shatter missiles, and most importantly, a forward shockwave generator assembly that could spew out starship-destroying plasma beams. If that wasn't destructive enough for a Mandalorian's liking, Basilisk war droids could also carry mines or small nuclear bombs to just yeet at the enemy. Basilisk war droids were like tank droids or droid gunships on steroids, capable of shrugging off a staggering amount of damage while simultaneously vaporizing entire villages. They were the embodiment of the early Mandalorian's complete lack of subtlety. But what was most frightening about the Basilisk war droids wasn't their insane destructive potential, but how the Mandalorians used them. While Basilisks could function effectively as tanks or starfighters, most Mandalorians preferred to use them to ODST onto a planet from space. Especially during the Mandalorian Wars, Mandalorian armor was designed to essentially lock onto the backs of Basilisk war droids, preventing the rider from falling off. The Mandalorians exploited this by using the Basilisk war droids to rapidly deploy troops onto the surface of target worlds. Instead of sending out troop ships, which enemy artillery could shoot down, Mandalorian warships would orbit low over planets, about 80 kilometers above the surface, and then deploy basilisk war droids and their riders from drop bays. The droids and their riders would plummet down toward a planet's surface at insane speeds, moving too fast for enemy weapons to track. 
just before they hit the ground, the droids would swerve up and immediately open fire on enemy positions. The droids' riders were protected during this descent by their Beskar armor and the magnetic tensor fields of the war droids. Once they made groundfall, they would lead the charge, clearing the way for lesser Mandalorians to descend in more traditional troop ships. By the time those second waves landed, the battle was usually already won. There were few enemies who could withstand the sheer mites of the Basilisk war droid. For a better picture of what this was like, here's Kanderous Auto, a veteran of the Mandalorian Wars, talking about his experiences riding Basilisk war droids. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with the Basilisk thrumming beneath me, my heart racing with fear of the coming battle. The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop base, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it, with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. The exhilaration. The euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons, was unmatched. An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. By the way, all of this was just the basic Basilisk model. During the Mandalorian Wars, other models of the droid were developed, with multiple seats, enclosed cockpits, or stronger weapons. The most powerful Basilisk variants were like starfighters with the offensive capability of capital ships, bearing little resemblance to their smaller cousins. The Basilisk war droids were first employed by Mandalore the Indomitable and the Mandalorian Crusaders, who used them in the conquests of Kua and the Republic shipyards at Foros. During the Great Sith War, these Mandalorians and their droid mounts fought alongside Exar Kun and Ulic Keldroma, the leaders of the Brotherhood of the Sith. Basilisk war droids rained from the sky during that conflict's most terrible battles, most notably at the Battle of Coruscant and Onderon. They were used sparingly in those days, reserved only for the greatest of warriors. After the end of the Great Sith War and the death of Mandalore the Indomitable, the Mandalorians came under the rule of Mandalore the Ultimate. Mandalore the Ultimate reorganized the Mandalorians into the Neo-Crusaders, who abandoned the nomadic ways of their predecessors and operated more as an imperial power. The Mandalorian raiding parties began to act more like conventional armies, and they used the Basilisk war droids even more effectively than the Crusaders before them had, and in great numbers. Under the Neo-Crusaders, the war droids and their riders became all but unstoppable. To really understand how terrifying these things were, you need to imagine what it would have been like to be on the receiving end of a Mandalorian assault. Imagine, for a moment, that you're living your best life on some random backwater outer rim planet. Your people are decently advanced, if not up to snuff with the rest of the galaxy, and they don't have any quarrel with the Republic, the Mandalorians, or anyone else in the galaxy beyond. One night, you're going about your business when you suddenly hear a sonic boom the sound entering the upper atmosphere. Another boom follows, then another, and then thousands more, a distant rolling thunder far above your head. You look up, wondering if it's about to rain, and that's when you see them. At first, it looks like the stars themselves are falling, but then they start to get closer, and you realize they're not stars at all. They're much smaller objects, burning up with the heat of re-entry. They plummet toward the ground faster than your eyes can track them, only to stop in midair as rocket boosters fire with a deafening roar. For the briefest whisper of a moment, you get a glimpse of the falling objects, these massive armored beasts glowing like hot coals. Then beams of energy blast out from their noses, melting through buildings like butter, laying waste to everything you've ever known within a fraction of a second. By the time you've recovered from the shock, they're everywhere, spewing out energy bolts and missiles, gunning down anything that moves, and still more of them are falling from the sky. That experience was shared by millions of beings scattered across the galaxy during the Mandalorian Wars in which the Neo-Crusaders swept across known space, their basilisk war droids leading the charge. 
There was no way the Republic and unaffiliated worlds targeted by the Mandalorians could defend against such attacks. The Basilisk war droids were a big part of why the Mandalorians were so hard for the Republic to repulse. When the Mandalorians were finally defeated above Malachor V, Revan made sure to neutralize the threat of their most powerful weapons. As part of the Mandalorian's surrender, he ordered the clans to dismantle their war droids, an order the Mandalorians reluctantly obeyed. Very few Basilisk war droids survived the Mandalorian's disarmament. Most that did were seized by the Republic and put into museums, permanently disarmed and deactivated. A scattering of basilisks remained operational and in Mandalorian hands in the centuries after the Mandalorian Wars, but they were never again deployed in such fearsome numbers. So that's the story of the basilisk war droid, the Mandalorian's greatest weapons. But what do you think? Would you like to hear more about the Mandalorians of this era? Free to post your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.